Ladies and gentlemen, please drop whatever it is you're doing, sit down and watch this game from start to finish. You will not regret it. This is without a doubt one of the wildest games of Advanced Wars that I have played in my life. And that is not a statement I make lightly. So this particular game is a training match between myself and the one and only Starflash250, one of the best players in the world, and it is actually a live match. Yes, we trained this alive. This is because this particular map is the first round that is being played in the ongoing Amariner Cup. Sadly, you can't sign up for it anymore. Uh, they didn't do a very good job advertising it. Might want to put it on the front page of your site, Advanced Source Spy Web. Uh, but when I saw that this was the first uh, map of the tournament, I decided to just ask Starflash if he wanted to play like five or six live matches against me just to prepare myself. Uh, live matches are, of course, matches with uh, a limited timer. I think we had 10 minutes on the clock and we get a two minute increment for every turn that we made. And I figured that if I could just play this map in bulk, it would make me familiar with it. So that was kind of my approach to the tournament, just play lots of games. I also played a bunch of other games. Expect to see a bunch of replay commentaries from this particular map, by the way, on the channel moving forward, because I'm obviously going to be covering my own tournament performance, but there's also a, a lot of other good people in this tournament that I'd like to cast, including the one and only Voice of Akasha. Yes, he actually entered this tournament. No, I won't be facing him because he's not in my division, thank God. Uh, but I definitely want to cost his tournament games, and there's also like a bunch of other games that I like to show off. So I hope you guys enjoy this map. You're going to see a lot of it. It's called Harsher Truth. <laughs> Harsher Truths. Harsher Truths, and it is a mixed base map. Uh, wild map, by the way. Absolutely wild map. You got two bases in the center. They're almost right next to each other. You can actually rocket lock your opponent uh, if they're not careful. Uh, then you have sort of like um, you have sort of like a weak side here. This is both players' weak side. But what's kind of funny is that on your weak side you have two airports, one that begins under your control. So a lot of a battlecopter play uh, is possible on this particular map. Uh, while the bases here are very close to each other, there's a lot of terrain separating them, like rivers, for example, rivers, forests, mountains. And uh, that means that you're not as likely to see combat take place here, because you can very easily lock down this area with an artillery, for example. Most of the combat on this particular map will be taking place here and here. These are like the two big uh, places of interest here, because of course, um, as player one, or the, as, as the black player here, I want to push down on this side and try and take this base. It's a lot harder to take than it looks. Uh, it's actually, I would actually say it's a bit of a mistake to try and take it early on. You can definitely try and take it later on, but uh, you need to be very careful that you don't lose your weak side base. But as with any other mixed base map, there's going to be action taking place everywhere. There's also like air units coming down here. There is a bunch of capture battles going on here. A lot of play, a lot of good place for artillery on this side. There are pipe seams that can be broken up, uh, open for more, uh, for easier entrance into the center. Here, there's going to be a bunch of infantry battles taking place. This map is wild. One of my favorite maps, actually, that I played on. So I really enjoy. It. Now, the more perceptive among you may look at my opponent and go, "Wait, wait, Manx, you see you're playing Star Flash? This isn't Star Flash. He's named Star Flash 250. This is an imposter. No, no, no. It's just his alt." His casually 1400 MMR rated alt, you know, just star flash things. <laughs> so uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we get into this map, obviously, I want to talk a little bit about the COs that we picked. So uh, there was like a very big consensus that Lash would be a very strong CO on this map, and a lot of pro players have indeed picked Lash. Now, oh, I don't think I need to explain why Lash is pretty good on this map. She's good on mixed base maps in general. But this particular map, I mean, just look at all the terrain. Look at the amount of forests that is on this map. Rivers, mountains, just terrain everywhere, which makes Lash very strong. Not only does she get that passive firepower increase, but when she pops her powers, her tanks and recons can just like blaze over the map. Uh, her infantry can suddenly capture cities that you thought were previously safe. So uh, Lash can really take you off guard here. But I personally, I looked at this map, I played multiple uh, matches with various CEOs. I really came to the conclusion that I think Kindle is the strongest pick uh, in tier three here. Uh, simply because of the amount of cities that is on the map, and because it's a mixed base map, cities are pretty much being captured all the time, because the balance shifts as the map goes on. As a result, Urban Blight is good because it keeps interrupting those caps, and it also just saps your opponent of value all the time, so... And I checked Voice of Akasha's match, and he, played, he picked Kindle too, so, you know, I, apparently someone agrees with me. 
But a lot of the Grandmasters that I talked to, they were like, no, Lash really good on this map. I think she's MVP, but again, I, I disagree. But let's just see how the map uh, match went. Again, would like to remind you, this is a training match. So we were both playing on a timer here. Do not expect like top level play here. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of blunders because when you're on the clock, you, you don't have time to think so. But still, that doesn't take away from how insanely entertaining this match is. So without, la without ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. So the first thing you do on this map, very simple, you capture the neutral basis. Nothing really to think about here. There are There is, like, some decision-making early on, whether or not, like, the, this infantry, for example, whether you want to go towards your own airport or whether or not you want to go here. I think the consensus is generally you want to try and grab, like, the this these properties first because they're relatively contested. Like, these properties here, I'm going to get them no matter what. These properties right here, a little bit more contested. Same thing here on Star Flash's side right here. Like, this property right here, we'll be fighting a little bit over these two, but he'll get these three no matter what, so... So both players just gonna go for um, go for whatever cities are close. Interesting diversion here for me and Starflash. Uh, Starflash actually went for this city, whereas I went for this one. Um, at this point, I was still figuring this match out. I don't think you're gonna see optimal capture chains in a live match. It's pretty much just capture whatever uh, capture whatever property is close. I open up tank on my weak side. I don't think I would do this anymore. I think the general consensus on this map is you want to focus your openers on these two bases right here. Because if you build a tank here, you can either send it over here or you can send it into the center. So it has more flexibility. Tank on weak side here, I kind of disagree with this because you're not really going to push on your weak side anyway. So why do you need a tank? I mean, I can interrupt this, but Star Flash is definitely going to open up a tank. Yeah, look at that. He's definitely going to open up a tank on his side now. So... Mm -mm. So now we've kind of established that the fighting is going to happen on this side of the map, which is not good for me because this is my weak side. So again, remember guys, on a map with multiple fronts, you never want to force battles on your weak side. It's just not a good idea. I move my tank down here. Against Lash, she definitely has a better day-to-day -day than I have in Kindle. And I'm not going to be able to get anywhere here. You see, Lash, uh, Star Flash just blocking off the city, moving his uh, tank onto this empty missile silo here. I'm not going to be able to fight against a Lash tank with 30% extra firepower. So Lash definitely has the day-to-day -day advantage here. I mean, I do get that juicy 40% bonus on cities, but uh, Star Flash gets bonuses on nearly all kinds of terrain. So it's definitely going to come down to a battle of um, value with Urban Blight versus Prime Tactics. So I have to pull back, and this is why I say, like, opening up tank here on the weak side, it's, it's just stupid, it's not gonna get anything done. It's a weak opener. Like, the tank should've, my tank should've come out here, I could've forced out a tank from Star Flash, honestly, because I have the initiative, being player one. But now I do actually build, I build two tanks, actually. <laughs> two tanks here, and another tank here. So again, spreading my, uh, spreading my aggression out a little bit. But it is a mixed base map, so you can't just focus everything on one side. Star Flash goes for the interrupt here. This mountain is perfectly positioned to allow you to do that, even though you're up against Kindle. Normally, this would not have worked if this was a road, for example. Uh, I would have dealt more damage to him than he would have dealt to me. But because of the positioning of that mountain, it is doable to interrupt that cap. So now Star Flash, he's sending his infantry down here. This allows him to capture either of those properties, depending on what I do. I'm obviously going to grab that, though. But he's actually sending his tank down here now because there's nothing really stopping him. I can build a tank on this base if I want to, but it's not really going to be able to reach him that easily. So, yeah, good solid play from Star Flash here. He realizes that he can't really put much pressure here with these two tanks here, so he just goes elsewhere. Builds a Bottlecopter. Bottlecopter is going to come out very quickly on this map, and you need Antire. Uh, and they're really strong here. You know, this river allows allows them to dart around your entire. If you're not careful, they can even go over, like, this Battlecopter can go over the bridge and block your base. So, uh, you have to be super careful. You have to get out those entires early on to prevent those Battlecopters from making your life a living hell. So here, I have to pull back. I can't really attack. I'm going to lose that engagement. The 40% defense, and also keep in mind, this is a Lash Infantry and a Mountain too. So, 40% extra firepower. It is ridiculous. So, I now send my tank over on this side. So now I'm actually, like, I'm reinforcing on my weak side, actually. So suddenly I actually have three th tanks in this area. So it's a little bit scary for Star Flash. This pipe's not going to get bl blasted open for quite some time. So uh, Star Flash is not really going to be able to do much unless... I mean, he can build two tanks, maybe. But the forests do slow them down a little bit. So 
Uh, I will say I did like my play here with the tree tanks moving on here. I definitely want to secure all these properties as quickly as possible. Also getting an anti air out because, you know, this, uh, this battlecopter is going to become very, very difficult to deal with now. Day 6 rolls in. Star Flash finishes capturing some more properties. Now he's going for these two properties. I can interrupt this, but again, keep in mind, Lash is kind of like a min mini Kindle on cities, you know? 30% extra firepower. It's very tough to interrupt her caps. So here, uh, my infantry is hanging. Uh, Starflash does not kill, but instead go decides to go for the um, go for the cap. I think maybe killing would have been better. Because it would have denied me a property. And he probably will get this anyway. But I guess, again, a live match. We have to make split-second decisions here. Artillery coming out. I do like this from Starflash. He wants to open up this pipe seam. Th this way he can reinforce immediately up here. He also interrupts here, even though it's not as good, because it's from a forest. And now he's sending his Battlecopter. And this is what, what I was talking about earlier. This, like, these Battlecopters are really annoying, because... Um, you, you know, if you build an anti-air to respond to the Battlecopter, it obviously can't go down here anymore. But you can still send it over the river. And a Battlecopter in this area is just a menace to deal with, because the, the woods and the rivers... You're not gonna catch that thing with an anti-air. It can dance around your anti-air, harass captures, deal damage to tanks, just be an overall pain to deal with. So uh, yeah, Star Flash pulls back a little bit here. He sees the three tanks. He does have artillery back up now though, so it probably shouldn't be too scary. I send my solitary infantry down here to capture the comb tower. Not really gonna get it. A little bit of a manx infantry, and here I have to send my anti-air up. But just look at look at how many look at the the limited range of this anti-air right here now. Like there's so many safe spots for this battlecopter to dart into. I do decide though, and this is a bit of a weird move. I guess I miscalculated the range of my anti-air. I thought I thought it was guarding the tank. But it didn't. Either that, or I was just okay with Star Flash hitting me. Actually, now that I think about it, I hmm, I think I was trying to trap him a little bit. I actually send my tank up here now. I get three tanks in this area right now on my weak side, so it's a bit of a weird match at the moment. Sending my tank over here to this uh, city. Always likes to put uh, units on properties as Kindle. Day 7 rolls in. Yeah, so here... Yeah, so this is actually... I think I was baiting him here because... Um, he, he takes a free shot on my tank. Or free. It looks free, but it's actually not. And I think he fails his wall here. Gobbles up. Yeah, Starflash got a lot of free hits on my infantries down here. I was a little bit annoyed by that. I do have a Battlecopter coming in to ward away that tank now. Yeah, that's a bit of a mistake on the artillery right here. The replay viewer is a little bit janky at times. This tank moved, it just hasn't been... Uh, this tank definitely moved, it just hasn't been updated yet. It has something to do with, with pipe seams, I'm not entirely sure. But you'll see, it'll correct itself at the end of the turn. So you'll see, hopefully it doesn't happen too often. I'm hoping they'll update it. Uh, yeah, there you go, you see? So he actually started blasting down both of these pipe seams with his tanks right now. Uh, so, uh, interesting though. Hmm. I mean, he kind of is a little open here. I could attack him. Do I, though? No, I don't. Interesting. So, when I was playing this, I remember thinking to myself that attacking this tank is not doable. And I'm, I guess maybe I thought that because he has an artillery here. He can blast open the pipes in and then move true. But could have kind of picked up a, almost a free tank here, I think. But yeah, here you see. So, uh, this is Starflash just not walling properly. And again, live match. I don't think Starflush would have made this mistake in a standard match for sure, but again, he, he saw a, an opportunity to hit a tank and he took it and, and he got punished for it. Again, uh, live game. Li just live game things. Wow, I actually attack a... Ooh, uh, a bit of a blunder here. Should have gone in with this infantry first. So attack from a road first. So I take the full counterattack damage from Lash. So that's a, a bit of a mistake. Again, you're going to see a lot of mistakes in this match. So here, I am going for the Comb Tower. He will be able to interrupt it, but it'll take heavy damage. I will get it eventually, though. He only has a single infantry in this area. So um, I'm actually doing a decent job denying his Comb Tower while getting mine. So here, goes in for the attack. Moves in. It's going to be difficult for me to... I need a tank out here on the south side, and indeed, out comes the tank. That's good. Builds another tank. Three tanks in one turn, and an infantry, yeah. Got to build... have to build a lot of tanks here. There's just so many... Again, like... This map is wild. There's, like, conflict everywhere. So Starflash comes in, gets a, just gobbles up my tank. But I got a Battlecopter, so I'm pretty happy about that. Ooh, gets a shot on the tank on the city. That is not good. Interrupts my Comb Tower, gets a Battlecopter. Right? I don't have an Antire in this area. That is kind of annoying. Should have built... Should Probably should have built an Antire here instead of a tank, honestly. 
Don't know why I did that. And yeah, he's doing a great job just denying me this area. Taking a lot of really good engagements right now. Um, he's also ahead of me in income, 25k to 22k. So Starflash playing this really well also gets another interrupt. Now this, as I said, this pipe is blasted open. It is displayed as not being. This is just a replay viewer bug. Just try to ignore it. It will correct itself eventually. So Starflash kind of outplaying me on all fronts right now, as you can see. Uh, it's not going well for me. But if you take a look at my power meter, boom, Urban Blight. And this is good. Interrupts a bunch of very important captures. Uh, gets this, uh, yeah, tank is damaged, interrupts this cap, interrupts this cap. Just a solid Urban Blight. I mean, not the best Urban Blight, but it definitely is a solid power. And I'm also going to prevent this capture for a little bit, which is nice. Also interrupts this capture. Just Urban Blight is so good, just for, for the interruption alone. Just gives you so much economy. I decided to do a join cap here. Um, I think I'm going to end up getting this tower for sure. Yeah, look at that. Four caps left. Yeah, it's not going to be able to kill me with that Battlecopter. Lash Battlecopters are not fantastic because they don't get the firepower bonus that our other units do. Also gets a very nice shot off here with this tank. I was happy with this one. You know, it's always so satisfying whenever you get that uh, super or that power hit. 80% extra firepower. If I had the Comm Tower capture at that point, it would have been a one shot for sure. So again, I see his entire I dart in here with my Battlecopter. And look just how powerful this Battlecopter is in this position right here. Look how much it threatens. This is the ideal Battlecopter position on this map right here, around the river here. You want to have as many Battlecopters in this area as possible. Untire just not going to catch up to them. They're just going to run around on a wild goose chase trying to chase them down, while the Battlecopters are just picking up free hits and get generating value. They are absolutely wonderful. Take a bit of a shot here, move back with my Untire. Kind of surprised I was able to save that Untire, honestly. Get a nice little luck shot on his tank. So suddenly that Urban Blight really equalized the playing field. I have to build another Antire here. And Day 9 rolls in from Starflash. He does not even try to interrupt, but he still takes the free infantry hit. Getting value whenever he can. The problem right now is, of course, he's going to take... He's probably going to take this Comp Tower away from me if I'm not careful here. And again, very good at picking up free units. Starflash is like... Whenever he, whenever he sees an opportunity for a free pickup, he eats the free dude. Does not capture the comm tower, but instead attacks me. A little bit surprising, but I'm guessing he's confident he'll get this comm tower regardless. Also, again, picks up another free infantry kill. I, I placed a lot of my infantry in range of Starflash this chapter. It was uh, kind of, it's kind of embarrassing to look at. But again, have to remind you guys, it is a live play. It attacks here for some reason, interestingly enough. I guess he just wanted to deal as much damage to me as he could. Preventing my capture of the city. You can also build a battlecopter here to interrupt it, so this should be fine. So yeah, um, things are not looking great for me right now. Starflash has an income lead. He's winning on pretty much every front that he's on. He's got a good force here. Um, he will take this comm tower. He can interrupt this. He can prevent the capture of these properties with a battlecopter. He's winning on this comm tower front. He's doing decently over here as well. So just overall, I was sweating pretty hard right now, but. That's, that's me every time I play a match against Starflash, honestly. He's just so damn aggressive. So, day 10 rolls in. I start capturing. I get my Comm Tower. So now I have that 10% uh, lead. I will probably be able to deny this for quite some time. Not all the time, but I think in a mixed base map, it's perfectly okay to try and go for the Comm Tower denial. Attack down here. I'm not going to be able to get the city. My Urban Blight is quite far away as of now. I insist on keeping taking engagements over here. I don't think it's going to go that well for me. I tried to block here, but he can easily send his tank back here to clean out that infantry. Uh, also, um, normally this would be a nice capture. Like, there's no way Starflash will be able to interrupt this. But look, his Prime Tactics is right around the corner. And then suddenly this infantry right here, who you previously thought would not be able to interrupt your cap, can just dart over the river. And this is one of the reasons why, Star why Lash is considered very strong on this map. And I do get that argument. I still think Urban Blight is more, just better overall, but I, there is no doubt that... Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was very happy with that. There's no doubt that, uh, that, that, that Prime Tactics is very good. And yeah, this is what I love about Kindle and our Battlecopters. If you can get them over cities, they still get that 40% boost, which makes them really strong. She definitely has way better Battlecopter play than Lash 2. Not that there's anything wrong with Lash's Battlecopter, it's just they don't benefit from her powers at all. So, anyway, Star Flash's turn rolls in, and I was definitely expecting him to get Prime Tactics this turn. So, he again picks up the free infantry while he can. 
In comes the tank. I, I don't really want to take these engagements here. It's way too close. And here we go. He pops his prime tactics. Broom! And look at his infantry. Boom. Interrupts. Of course, doesn't get any bonuses from the river because it's zero stars, but it's still pretty nice. And it also allows him to do stuff like this, which is another reason why prime tactics is just considered very strong on this map. Not to mention, like, I ain't interrupting this. It's going to be very hard. That's, a, that's, a, that's an infantry with 70% extra defense, ladies and gentlemen. That's a samurai spirit level infantry. He even deals some damage to the infantry just to make sure I'm not going to get it. So, yeah. And also, like, this artillery, four defense stars. It's like it's in a mountain. Very, very scary. It's too bad. It's too bad for Star Flash that he didn't have a healthy infantry in range of the tower. Otherwise, he probably would have gotten it. But sadly, he did not get it. He has to run away with his battlecopter because there's literally nowhere else for him to go. But you can see how strong Prime Tactics is on this map, for sure. I definitely understand the last pick. But you'll just see how much value your Urban, urban Blight generates over the course of a match here. So it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be quite insane. So, I, I still take some engagements against uh, Star Flash, even though uh, even though Prime Tactics have been popping. It's time for another Urban Blight. Again, just value all over the, across the boards. And, and it also interrupts the cap. So that's just one of the things that I really like about it. Again, one of the great weaknesses of Lash, and I am actually making a video about Lash right now that is probably going to come out in a little bit. And this video explains why Lash is considered such a bad pick in Tier 3, despite seemingly looking like a good CO from the offset. So here we go. I combine my tanks together because I realize that it's better to have one healthy tank than two weakened ones. And I am kind of rolling him. I am rolling a little bit over him on this front right now. So that's like the first minor victory that I've started to accumulate against Star Flash now. He's winning on most of the fronts, but I'm starting to push him back heavily here. I don't have much infantry presence in this area, though. And this damn anti is still doing a lot of damage to me on this side, so I have to fix it. And again, my god, he was so annoying with his interrupts this turn. Now he's also threatening the comm tower, but I do have an anti-air in place to deal with that, so. And he traps my tank. <laughs> he traps my tank, it was so annoying. And he has his battlecopter here too, so. But yeah, he's definitely winning here. So I don't really know why I insist on keep on taking battles in this area. Now he's I would say Star Flash is overextending a little bit here, definitely. I mean you don't you don't want to take battles this close to Kindle's bases. It's Kindle we're talking about. She even has a city here that she can fight from. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is ballsy, feisty to say the least from Mr. Star Flash right here. I guess he felt confident because I just popped my Urban Blight. And again, just this entire man, he just gobbles up free units everywhere. It's so so annoying. Day 12 rolls in. I am continuing to deny the comm tower. Now my battlecopter has come in too. And Star Flash has a big weakness here right now. Look, at he has so many tanks and artillery and everything. He doesn't have a single anti-air though. He, luckily for him, he did uh, blast open this pipe seam so he can reinforce quickly. But this battlecopter right now, it is undisputed. And even if he has to build an anti-air and then he has to spend a, a turn moving it in. And by that time, I'm gone. So this battlecopter has two turns of mayhem right now. Also placing my infantry on top of the uh, tower. Uh, if he wants to attack me now, he's going to suffer that 40% increased firepower back. And yeah, I felt pretty good about taking engagements this close to my base right now. I don't really care about this artillery shooting on my tank. I uh, did place the artillery on top of the HQ. This was ballsy, I'd say. Yes, sure, it gets 40% extra defense, but uh, it's also pretty easy for Star Flash to just attack it. And also, uh, I build a medium tank. This is like, look at the amount of tanks that Star Flash has in this area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tanks. Of course, three of them is on very low health, but still... This is definitely, this calls for a medium tank for sure. This is like medium tank on the city. Star Flash ain't getting true here, no matter what. He just, he just ain't. He just ain't getting true. So, uh, I bring my battlecopter up. I, as much as I would have liked to keep it in this area, I realized that I need, I need to deal with Star Flash's attack on my main base here. Whenever Star Flash is massing outside your front door, uh, that's definitely the time to be cautious because we all know Star Flash has balls of steel and he loves eating. And he will, he will attack, like, he, he will, if he sees, like, a 60-40 chance to win, he'll go for it. He's a gambler. So he'll take risks that other players won't take. So you can count on him being aggressive. Very rarely will he pull back. Although, of course, now he kind of has no choice but to pull back a little bit. He surrounds my Battlecopter. That was hilarious. Really nice maneuver right there. To, to pull off a surround like that in a live match is quite hilarious. 
Again, Star Flash is just so damn good at playing live. He just he plays this game intuitively. He, his instincts are really solid. He doesn't need to think because he just knows the moves. He's feeling the stats, effectively. So, day 13 rolls in. And, uh, yeah, I... I realized that I'm probably not gonna save this uh, Bottlecopter, but I, at least I can get a free shot with it. Builds another bot. I build a lot of Bottlecopters now because I realized that Starfly has to pull his Untire this way now, so it's a good opportunity for me to build Bottlecopters on the right side because either way, I'll be he, he'll either be forced to split his Untire or build even more Untire, which is something he doesn't want to do right now. So yeah, I just move in. My Bottlecopters are getting some good value engagements, and I'm even able to block this Untire, although. Star Flash still has the ability to go over here. It's too bad I didn't have an extra unit I could have put here. Otherwise, this would have been a very nice block. But it's not really going to work now. Takes a little bit of a shot with my Huntire. Gets a slightly low roll. This was ballsy. I don't really know why I thought this would be a good idea. Again, live match. It felt like a good idea at the time. But I do believe Star Flash is going to notice a hole in my defenses very soon. And he's going to go for it. So, yeah. Prime Tactics, two stars away. There's a 20% fatigue in play right now, so I don't think he's going to get it. But he decides to pop Terrain Tactics. Never underestimate a good, well-placed Terrain Tactics, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people play under the false assumption that Lash only wants to pop her superpower. And it is true. She definitely wants to pop her superpower. But Terrain Tactics can really take you off guard as well. And also, keep in mind, it still gives you that 10% boost. So yeah, this was pretty devastating. This allows Star Flash to pretty much move freely through the forests, which opens up so many attacks for him. He sacks a bunch of his low HP... Oh my god, he sacks three tanks! <laughs> like, who figures out a wall break like this in a live format? Star Flash does. It's insane. Like, the amount of attacks... Like, he finds his attacks so quickly. It's crazy. And now he, he will also grab this tower, even though I do have a Battlecopter in this area. Uh, Star Flash does have his Untire in position right now. And suddenly, he's starting to win everywhere again. <laughs> like, the little minor lead that I had for a little moment there is starting to... Uh, it's starting to fade away, and it's not fun. So, as we go into day 14, I pop another Urban Blight. I almost have two of them ready right now. It's not a great Urban Blight, come to think of it. I don't even know if I should have popped it, but there's some good opportunities to get some nice firepower boosts here. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what I was doing here. I guess I really wanted to kill that artillery. Not a great attack from me, looking back at this. I think I was getting really stressed at this point. I did get a nice attack there, though, which is nice. Never underestimate Kindle. Um, the, the, um, Kindle can dislodge anything off a of base, and this is something that is very scary. I mean, hell, right now, I'm kind of, like... Starflash cannot really attack me on this base, lest he wish to, wish to base block himself. And I just go near tank right now, because I realize that I'll take, I can't outnumber Starflash, so I have to attack him. And now some of his properties are actually kind of vulnerable. I still haven't captured these two properties. He's done a great job uh, interrupting them, but now this property is hanging. So uh, Starflash is he's attacking pretty heavily right now, and he feels justified doing that. But we've, we've kind of equalized our income at this point. Uh, and uh, now I'm actually ahead in value. So uh, Starflash... I think he went a little too aggressive for his own sake here. That being said, he's now threatening my comm tower, and in fact, he's gonna get it. Though, my Urban Blade is pretty close around the corner. I'm not gonna have it completely, because I just popped it, and there's a 20% um, like increased costs for your power if you charge it above the normal rates. But uh, Star Flash is also threatening two extra properties from me now now so this if i'm not careful and takes another one with this one hp infantry oh i remember being so annoyed that i didn't get interrupt that and again he interrupts it like he's holding on to his properties so well and you know uh hats off to star flash he keeps on the attack even though he's up against a neo tank and a medium tank he just keeps on the attack he doesn't pull back and it's pretty crazy. Builds a Bottlecopter here, he has to. I've taken this property away from him. I'll, I'll take this airport if he doesn't build a Bottlecopter, so that's pretty much forced. But he wants to build Bottlecopters anyway, so it's fine. Day 15 rolls in. We are pretty tied. Uh, Starflash was able to equalize the the value lead a little bit. He's very ahead of me in unit count, though. 30 units to 21, so yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so here, I sack a Bottlecopter into an Untire to get my Urban Blight. And I have to do this, because there's no way I'm interrupting these two. 
lest I wish to pull my Neo Tank, which I really don't want to do. And it also interrupts the Com Tower for one additional turn and prevents him from getting this one. And this is this is what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. When I say that, I think Kindle is really strong on this map. On a mixed base map like this, there are so many captures taking place everywhere. Like we're in day 15. There's one, two, three, four, five, six captures going on simultaneously. This is just how a mixed base map works. There's always going to be the pressure is always going to shift back and forth. Properties will ping pong back and forth between the players. This is why I think Urban Blight is unrivaled in a format like this, because you just get so many interrupts and it, it saps your opponent of value and it gives you a firepower increase. I just don't think Lash's powers can compare to this. Uh, sure, she has the slightly stronger day-to-day -day of the two COs, but Urban Blight is just so much cheaper, so much more valuable. It just opens up so many avenues of attack. Just look at this. I was able to dislodge this tank because it's unser- What the hell am I doing here? Oh, right. I wanted to kill the Empire. Now I remember. And again, just look at the amount of value this thing is giving me. And, and I'm able to deal heavy damage to Star Flash's tanks. Now, obviously... I do need to get this. I can't let Star Flash get both of the Com Towers. I've been fighting with the 10% firepower lead for quite a while now, and I've been pretty happy about that. It's probably the only reason Star Flash hasn't completely rolled over me yet. But uh, I definitely, like, he risks taking both the Com Towers now, and I cannot let him do that. Antire comes in. Star Flash is not capping. He's going to get both of those if I don't do something. And my Urban Blight is definitely not ready next turn, because I just popped it twice in a row. He joined caps and pops another terrain tactics. My goodness, when I saw this, I was like, what the hell is he thinking now? First, the attacks, comes in with his tank. <laughs> look at look at the stuff that Lash can pull off here. I mean, oh my good. Just look at this insanity right now. <laughs> True two forest tiles. Dislodges the tank and gets a nice attack as well. My goodness. What an insane, uh, what an insane play. And he joined caps together. And he gets the 10% extra defense thanks to his power. And now he's shifting his tanks away from my from my Neo tanks. And because he has that terrain tactics, he can outrun them because I can't pursue him through the woods. So, again, I definitely see why people favor Lash on this map. She has some very, very cool plays to pull off with her powers. But <coughs> my turn rolls in and I am now grabbing these two properties. I'm probably not going to get this one considering his tank presence, but I might be able to get this one if he doesn't pull his entire down. Again, I just want to take these properties already. But I actually decided to move in with my Battlecopter and interrupt this. And I just don't get it. I think there was a chance I might have. But I cannot let him grab my cities. And I really am fighting hard. I, I wasn't able to interrupt this, sadly. He's going to get that now. But uh, I was able to deny it for a pretty long time. This is technically my Com Tower because this is my strong side. And I decide to chase his tanks with my Neo Tank because, you know, might as well. I mean, what else is it going to do? Go and gobble up these two infantry? It's a bit of a waste of a Neo Tank, if you ask me. Also, I was able to grab this property from him. He didn't have an artillery out in time to deal with it. So now I have to send my Antire over here. This was definitely a mistake. I thought that this artillery would, would, would protect the Antire from these two tanks. But uh, Star Flash is, yeah, he can still, he can send one tank over here to kill the artillery and the two others to kill the Antire. It will cost him his three tanks, but they're probably dead anyway, so. Anyway, day 16 rolls in, uh, and it's time to see what Star Flash decides to do. Captures the Com Tower, he finally gets it. Now he's the one with the 10% uh, firepower lead. He forgoes the capture of this tower to get the Antire shot. But yeah, this is what I was talking about. See, picks up the artillery, picks up a free Antire as well. He's going to lose all of these three tanks, but they were probably dead anyway. So he gets whatever value he can out of them, which is not a bad thing at all. Picks up a free tank on the city, prevents it from repairing. And yeah, as I said, he's going to interrupt here as well. Starflash is just so good at interrupting captures. He just won't let me have any cities at all. And that is definitely the proper play for sure. So here, he realizes that I'm about to place a lot of pressure on him. So he moves his uh, forces over to the west side. Again, like, we have just been beating each other up pretty hard at this point. Uh, we're on day 16, and it doesn't appear that there's a clear winner anywhere in sight. Although Star Flash is starting to race ahead on the, on the properties right now. Day 17 rolls in. Uh, I decide to pick up some free tanks. Om nom 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 nom. And now I'm starting to apply a little bit of pressure down in this area. And... Boom! It's another Urban Blight, ladies and gentlemen. They're just going to keep coming in. This one was very good. This is a very strong Urban Blight right here. 
Just the amount of value that I'm getting off this. I mean, I'm in this game predominantly because of Urban Blight, and now I'm also going to be able to get this Comb Tower, which means that at the very least our firepower will be equalized. Have to get an anti air out, too many battle copters in this area. I should have probably had another one. And uh, again, I tried to take these properties, man, but Star Flash just. It's very hard to take these because he always makes sure that he has a tank in range to interrupt. His positioning is just really nice. Day 17 rolls in. He gets a nice little shot off the Neo tank right here. It's definitely very damaged. Join combines his infantry together. Pretty smart, honestly. Is he gonna. Oh my god, he's gonna be able to interrupt this, isn't he? Oh, I thought, I thought I got the Comb Tower this turn, but I guess it's going to be one more turn now. Again, interrupts another city. Just interrupts all across the board for Mr. Star Flash right here. Even attacks with this tank against my Neo tank just to try and get a little bit of value. This was very cute, honestly. Threatens the capture of another city here. Now, I haven't said this yet, but there is a 35, uh, there's a 35 turn limit on this map, by the way. Um, this is because the, we are we were using the same rules for the tournament, basically. So 35 days uh, uh, capture limit. Sorry, 35 capture limit. So whoever can capture 35 properties wins, and whoever uh, has the most properties after day 35 will win. I, I should have probably said this at the start of the video. I forgore. I'm sorry. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's still very even. Although Star Flash is, I th I'd say he's definitely in a better position. He also has his terrain tactics ready, or possibly prime tactics ready again. My turn is nowhere near ready right now. So I try to capture a bunch of cities. I jo I do join cap here. This locks his tank in position. And I really thought I was going to get the city now, but look, Lash has a recon nearby. You know what that means, right? But ever so slowly, I am starting to establish a lot of dominance in this area. Again, this is Star Flash's weak side. He definitely shouldn't attack on this side because I, I have two bases that will be able to reinforce immediately. Get a cute little shot off the battle copter here. It's going to repair itself anyway. It's fine. And I really, I just really want to get this Comb Tower, man. <laughs> I just really want to get this Comb Tower. And of course, look what he also has in this area. An Antair. You know what that means. You think you're safe because of the forests? You're not going to be safe. So day 18 rolls in. Boom! Another terrain tactics pumped by Star Flash, and this one was exceptionally uh, decent. So look at this. Boom! Gets a free shot off the tank. Boom! Antair gets to kill the Battlecopter, and he denies the tower again. Darts over the river. Recon because of terrain tactics is able to interrupt despite my join cap. I mean that this was a phenomenal terrain tactics by Star Flash. And for him to just see this in a live format is so exceptional. I cannot... The only thing I disagree with in this particular attack is that he should pull back here. This is the... Again, you live by the Star Flash, you die by the Star Flash. Right? He is so good at seeing attacks. But he's almost a little too good at seeing them. Because he cannot let up. Like, I think everyone will agree that this is overextending. I have a Neo tank. I have a Medium tank. I have an Antair. Star, Mr. Starflash, you don't want to attack into this. But again, he was in live mode and he was in yeet mode, so he just kept yeeting. And that's like definitely, if Starflash has a weakness, that is his biggest weakness. It's just that he doesn't, he doesn't let up. He doesn't relent. He keeps attacking until either you're dead or he's dead. There is no in-between. No retreat. No surrender. Push forward. But so far, it's been working out pretty well for him. There's still no clear winner here. I continue to cap, but this recon is just being very annoying. Finish off some Battlecopters, and yeah. Now my, my Neo Tank and Medium Tank are really going to come into play here. And Star Flash needs to be very careful right now. I get an Urban Blight. I was very happy about this. Boom. Not the best Urban Blight I've had, but I, it, it interrupts this capture, which is why I popped it. It also interrupts this capture. So, uh, again, two properties. You see just... How good Urban Blight is just keeps getting me value throughout the match. If it wasn't for my Urban Blight, Star Flash would have had like 10 extra properties at this point, and I, I just would have lost the match. So here I build a... I don't really know why I built a Recon here, probably to try and interrupt this. Uh, I also build a Battlecopter, even though there is an anti here, but it's a 4 HP anti so it's not that big a deal in my opinion. Anyway. So... The match is definitely going into its late stages now. We're on day 19, but no clear winner has been established yet. Are we going to see this go to turn limit, I wonder? Hmm. Star Flash sends his forces back for a pair now. Uh, he is... Uh, he can do that now because I just popped my power in. Like, how many Urban Blights have been now? Five? So we're actually starting to see... I think we're seeing the one... Yeah, so that means our powers are now twice as expensive, I think. And we can actually see it if we hover over here. Uh, I can't hover over during the power. I need to wait one turn. But I think we've seen five Urban Blights 
So uh, that means that we are officially on 100% fatigue. So that means that I essentially I have a six star normal power now, and this is this is a weakness with Kindle for sure, in my opinion. Like, sure she's very strong initially with the three star normal power, but as the match progresses, her power like due to the amount of times she spams it, she'll definitely reach fatigue quicker than her opponent. I think Star Flash has popped three powers. I popped five, so almost twice as many. But it looks like finally I might just be able to get the city after trying for like five days. But man, he, he even has a good presence over here, and a lot of my properties are hanging right now, if you notice how weak. I don't have a single unit in this area. This city, this city, this city, this city, all of these properties are hanging. And what's scary, too, is that Starflash can shift his entire down here to base to lock my airport down. So, uh, Starflash has a very strong attack right now, and if I'm not careful, I'm going to lose so many properties. I have to pull back a little bit. I realize that this entire isn't a major threat to me. I don't know why I think I'm going to be able to capture this. I just really want a comm tower, man. I'm so tired. I missed my comm tower. Day 20 rolls in. Starflash now really starting to establish income dominance right now. 29,000 to 22,000. And now, and I'm not going to be able to interrupt here either. This is looking really bad. My Urban Blight. Let's take a look at my Urban Blight right now. 59,400. Uh, what is the normal price of Urban Blight? 20, 29,000, I think? Seven. Uh, yeah, 27,000. So I think I popped four, five Urban Blights then. Or four? I'm not entirely sure. So this seems like a weird number. 59,400. No, I think it's double price. I think it's double price because it's 29. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely double price already. Battlecopter goes down. And uh, yeah, his income is going to start to really skyrocket. Nope, nope, not going to get this property. He interrupts it again. He interrupts it again. A little bit puzzled by the movement of this medium tank right here. He's kind of just giving me a free shot. I think he was intending to build something on his base. In comes the offensive artillery. Only, only Star Flash in live matches sends his artillery towards his opponent's base. But uh, yeah, I think no, no. He just, did he just give me a free medium tank shot there? That's kind of weird. I guess he did. I mean, he might be able to trap it, so it might be a bait. But yeah, here we go. I actually, this is this is one of the reasons why I think Kendall is very strong on harsh recruits. You have a you have a base and a city right next to each other. This is not good when you're up against Kindle because this allows her to attack you. Furthermore, if you if you actually are reckless enough to do this while her Urban Blight is ready, she can pop Urban Blight, move on, destroy your tank, and then like base block you. So uh, this is another reason why I picked Kindle is predominantly because of these two properties that are right next to each other. Kindle loves properties that are next to each other. There is nothing she likes more than that. But yeah, it looks like Starflash just gave me a free medium tank shot. Not really sure why I did that. Also. Nice bo uh, city boosted battlecopter right there, and he also gave me a uh, a, a, a com tower boosted battlecopter shot, and his com tower is hanging. So yeah, Starflash has an income advantage. It's a big one, but I got a lot of good engagements this turn, a lot of good engagements this turn. So uh, this is the this is the joy of a mixed space map. Even though you're behind, comebacks are still very plausible, just because of how they're structured. Don't really know why I did that. I guess I sacked the recon just to make sure he couldn't capture my property. This is something you can do. This is what I call the Scorched Earth tactic. If someone is pushing into your area, you sack your units to target fire their infantry. You're sacking your units, but you're taking down their infantry. The reason I call it Scorched Earth is because you're kind of... You're removing your own presence in the area, but you're also taking away their uh, infantry or damaging it. Which means that they're not going to be able to capture your properties as quickly, which means you have time to reinforce. I've seen this a lot on uh, Verdum of Valhalla. It's a very common map where you see the strategy happen a lot on. But yeah, Starflash, man, he just keeps attacking. There we go. Neo tank on the property. I have my Urban Blight ready, though. He's got to be careful. You guys know what's coming. You think the 7 HP Neo tank is not a threat? Oh, but it is. Starflash happily gobbles up the free recon, and now he's starting to push here. I need to be careful now. My one base is in serious uh, jeopardy. It might just end up being captured. This infantry now threatens three different properties. And he's going to capture these properties here too. 30,000 to 21,000. This is not good. This income lead is crazy bonkers scary. And uh, I don't have any infantry presence here either to capture this comm tower. So it's looking pretty good for Starflash right now. Right. Day 22 rolls in. My Urban Blight is uh, pretty close. 
I just need a single engagement and I should be fine. I finally get my comb tower back, thank god. Now I'm the one with the 10% lead. And boom, Urban Blight comes in once again. I think this is Urban Blight number 6. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Neo Tank versus Neo Tank. 1 HP. <laughs> This is why you should never let Kindle have the city. Like, when you're up against Kindle, place a goddamn infantry on the city. Don't let her take it. It's too damn scary. And look at this. I'm even able to kill it. No, wait. I didn't. I tried. I think that was a pretty, pretty pathetic roll. But still, you know, got to gamble a little bit on live matches, you know? But, oh, okay. I actually... I had a battle copter. Could I have base blocked? Could I have base blocked? Was that a, was that a misplay? No. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. No, nah, I wouldn't. No, nah, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't have been able to. I wouldn't even even have been able to base lock with. But I should have just gone for the battle copter first, in my opinion. I don't know why I attacked with the tank. That was kind of dumb. Anyway. So uh, yeah, I mean, I'm trying my best to fight Star Flash back, but his income lead is starting to become very crippling now. But I'm still getting a lot of decent engagements, though. I can also block this this tank. He doesn't want to attack it right now. 80% extra firepower, 90% with the comb tower. So 100%, I think, if we include the passive boost. So. Very scary for Star Flash right now. But I think this was a big misplay. He builds another Neo Tank, which is kind of funny. But uh, yeah, now a lot of my properties will start to hang. He has a healthy Antire, which will ward away my Battlecopter in this area. It's just very scary. He finally pulls this artillery. This artillery hasn't really done a whole lot. Actually, no, it has, now that I think about it. This artillery has been a long alive for a very long time. Isn't this the artillery he used to blast? Has this artillery traveled from this base all the way up here? I think it has. Either that, either, either that or it's a new one. But yeah, already the artillery right here. If, if that is indeed the artillery that blasts open the pipe scene, that guy has had a long and illustrious career. Definitely needs that Deidre's Best Buy gift card for sure. Day 23, ladies and gentlemen. Star Flash still has that income lead. We're still pretty even in value, though. My power nowhere near ready. But here, I mean, I could have attacked his Neo, but I figured the tank was probably a better pickup. Medium tank doing work here. Battlecopter's gonna come in too, be very annoying. Again, Battlecopter's just so strong on this map. And now I'm starting to build up a decent attack on his base right now. He has a single Neo tank, but I have a Neo tank on repair. And uh, yeah, this airport is hanging too. So uh, Star Flash needs to be careful. Again, it's the joy of a mixed base map, man. Even though you're winning on multiple fronts, there's always a chance for a comeback. But I don't know why I thought I'd get this city. I don't know why I do these things, man. It's a live game. You do stupid things. <laughs> Look at this Battlecopter. It's completely boxed in. The Antire is just chasing it off. It can't do anything. So, Prime Tactics. Is he going to pop it? No? There we go. Just want to capture a little bit first. Boom. Prime Tactics. 40% boosted Neo Tank. Scary. Battlecopter. Pulls him. Not... If I remember correctly, I don't think this was the best... Oh! My goodness. This is the... Pro oh... Yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. You think the city's safe? No, it ain't. It ain't safe at all. Now this airport is completely locked down. He, just for good measure, he, like, he did, there was no need to do this, Star Flash. You didn't need to do this. You had the entire, this is just BM. He's just, he's just glowing at this point. Yeah, oh, by the way, I'm so sorry. For everyone who forgot that this pipe was blasted down, it's not showing. Uh, but it is, it is. It just... I'm sorry for the confusion. This is annoying. I think he blasted it down last turn, but the attacks on the pipe seams just don't register for some reason. It takes a little while. I don't know what he was doing here. Oh, he's preventing me from killing his Battlecopter. That's what he's doing. So. And yeah. Still has that 30k income lead right now, or 8k income lead. 30k to 22k. And more it is about to become, because he's capturing several of my properties right here. This is just so scary. I am threatening his airport right now. No, he needs to get some tanks out there. Two anti are locking down his airport. But what I do have is a pretty decent attack on his uh, weak side. And that's definitely the only thing that will keep me in the game now. This, this, I realize this Battlecopter is dead, so I take a shot at the tank. So it's fine. And I start to beat him back here ever so slightly. And now I'm also sending... I don't know why I built the mech, but these these cities are, pre, are free pickings right now. Starflash has a slight force here that he can send up. but uh, And now I'm also going for the tower. And uh, getting a 20% firepower lead over your opponent is definitely good. And that will keep me in the game. I'd say, I'd say like 
a single comm tower is probably worth like a couple of cities in terms of value. And then I'd say when you get two comm towers, the value increases exponentially. If you are two comm towers ahead of your opponent, I'd say you can probably be around five to six K income behind them and still play evenly just because you're getting more value out of your engagements. So you get a 20% firepower bonus. Now also keep in mind that the fact that I have a tower and Starflash don't also means that I effectively get 10% extra defense because he's not dealing 10% extra damage to me. So you can kind of consider it as a defense boost as well. So, you know, Comp Towers, they are very important on this map, and they do, they can ping pong back and forth. Starflash is definitely spreading himself very thin here. He's focusing hard on this area. Uh, but right now, I mean, if you look at our positioning right now, I am suddenly way ahead of him in value, despite being 8k behind him in income. This is just a joy. I mean, this was before my Battlecopter got picked off, of course, and he's still, you know, he's continuing to attack here, but I would say that Starflash's greatest weakness in this match so far is that he just keeps attacking me in areas where I'm beating him back. He's just too damn proud. He just loves eating. But again, keep in mind, guys, live match. Ha! <laughs> cute little <laughs> boosted Neo tank. That's kind of cute. Kills my Battlecopter. And once again, he's moving forward. He wants to try and take the Comp Tower, I guess prevent me from taking he also needs to guard these properties because they are they are hanging at the moment mm -mm. Ooh, long match ladies and gentlemen i knew this was going to be a long one all right so this is scary though very scary attack here i have a neo tank urban blight is around the corner i got an artillery backing it up this is uh this is not a pretty engagement for Starflash. He risks losing his entire base. Also, I'm not capping this property, and I'm gonna get it. Bottlecopter blocking the me the medium tank from advancing. This is why bottlecopters are so strong on this map. It's just their ability to block. Starflash can interrupt this if he wants to, but it'll cost him the entire. And here comes the attack. I'm countering. Again, really don't want to be overextending here, Mr. Starflash. I got a base in the area. Builds another tank, and now I'm really focusing hard on... I really want to... I realize that he's so far ahead in income. 10k now. I need to take a base from him. That's the only thing that's going to keep me in the game. So I set up an infantry wall. And don't really know why I didn't put the artillery there. Or there. I guess I wanted to scare the uh, Neo tank off the airport? It's the only thing I can think of, really. I mean, I guess, a live match. I, I just did something because it seemed like a good idea at the time. Day 25 rolls in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still 10k behind, but somehow I'm in, I'm in the match. Starflash takes my airport from me. That's a big loss. Kills my Untire, too. Luckily, I have another. Thank God. If that, if I didn't have a second Untire backing me up there, could have gone really badly for me. Starflash does not want to give me two Com Towers. He realizes that that might be a little scary. He captures another city, ladies and gentlemen. 32,000 to 20,000. Ah! How the hell am I still in this match? It's because of Urban Blight. That's what, That's how. Because Kindle's really damn good on this map. But, I mean, this is insane. I mean, he's getting so much more value from me. All he needs to do is stall himself to victory. Keep in mind, there's a, there's a 35 turn limit on this map, too. So, really, all Starflash needs to do is just hold on to the bases that he has. He doesn't even need to do that. He just needs to hold out to, to a majority of them. He can, he can let, like, five properties swing in my favor, and he'll still win. So he's in a super good position to win this game now. Despite the fact that I'm, I keep getting so much value from Urban Blight. So here, what am I doing? I guess I'm going for the... Uh, okay, yeah, right, right, right. I wanted to get the Urban Blight here. Another very strong one. Is this Urban Blight number 7? I think so. Interrupts this cap right here. Day, day 26. It's still interrupting captures. And I get a nice shot off the Neo here. Again, this is just not a good position for Starflash to fight in, I think. And now his base is in serious jeopardy. I, I just risk taking it from him right now. I just risk I just straight out risk taking his base. And that is definitely going to be scary for him. Because we still have nine days left before the timer ticks down. So uh, a lot can happen in those nine days. Because we're in the late game now. A lot of units are moving around the field. Nine turns is a long ass time. I build a lot of tanks because I realize that there's just fights taking place everywhere and I need some mobility. Starflash coming in with a Battlecopter now. Threatening two more. He is risking vi winning by a capture right now. One, two, three cities are being captured right now. That would put him up to 34. One more and he wins. So uh, I was in serious trouble right now and I knew it. He has to di divert an entire medium tank over here, which I was very happy about. He joined caps. Ooh. He joined Caps, ladies and gentlemen. This is scary. And pops another Terrain Tactics. Is this the fourth Terrain Tactics we've seen? 
absolutely bonkers. Gets a nice shot on the artillery right here. Tank strolls through two. <laughs> strolls through two forests. Really, really strong. But yeah, this is this is not looking good for me. This is not looking good for me at all. Even though I do have I still have a slight value lead. How how the hell am I su supposed to be able to take like six properties in this amount of time? Especially considering Lash is very good at taking properties with her movement. I will say, though, this Prime Tactics was not the best I've seen. I think he popped it just because he wanted the boosts and not necessarily because of a lot of the movement. He did, he did give him the nice shot on his tank, but yeah. So now I'm just straight up in, like, pr and this is so scary when you're up against the one base right here. Like, I can block his movement. I risk taking this property away from him as well. And at that point, I do take another property back from him now. So I equalize the playing field just a tiny little bit. But he's still going to grab a lot. He's still going to grab these two cities and this city. So, uh, yeah, this is very, very, very scary. Get a nice little boosted uh, Battlecopter there. I am capturing this city right now. And I'm threatening the Comb Tower all of a sudden. And I don't actually think there is a way he can interrupt that now. So now I'm actually risking that 20% firepower increase. This medium tank, by the way, three fuel. This medium tank, he is definitely... He, he definitely is the, uh, the recipient of the best bar, buy gift card award right now. I mean, look at this guy. Zero shots left, three fuel, five HP. That is a well-trained medium tank. This guy's seen some stuff. This guy's seen a lot of battle. And he has he has deserved a nice little rest for now. I would love to see someone actually try to tally up his value. I don't think he's... He, he must have killed a lot of stuff if he's out of ammo. I mean, medium tanks, don't they have like six or seven shots? And that is my alarm. I need to turn it off. My bad. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, my bad. I, I didn't actually expect this to be almost an hour long, so I have my alarm on for something I needed to do. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're not done with this game yet. We're in day 27. A winner has still not been declared. Let us continue. So, got to get myself back into this match again now. I had to do a little bit of a cut. Um, so, Mr. Starflash, he's still valiantly fighting back on this front, but considering it's his weak side does get two more properties though 32,000 to 20,000 now and he's gonna get this one too isn't he yep there we go 33,000 to 19,000 he's so far ahead and yet for some reason I'm still in the game I don't know how I do know how it's because Kindle is busted but it's disgusting it's this I should not be in this game still I just should not be in this game it's that simple Forcing his medium trying to attack my infantry. So there we go. He moves his Battlecopter back now. He realizes that he's probably lost his front. I don't think there's anything he can really do. But he can he can apply pressure elsewhere. I finally get the Comb Tower. No, Manx! Cap the Comb... No! No! Cap capture the goddamn Comb Tower before you make engagements. I hate that I do this. This is like one of my... Ah, oh, this is so... No! <laughs> capture the goddamn Comb Tower! I mean, I guess I am killing a lot of stuff, so it's not a huge deal. But at some point, I surely have... Oh, my goodness. I still do. I, I didn't see it. Yeah, there we go. Th now I recognize the Comb Tower. So, yeah. Now I have a 20% firepower advantage. This definitely allows me to stay in the game, despite the fact that I am so far behind capture-wise. And I will say, if you look at Starflash's positioning right now, there are several holes being, being opened up right now. Because I still have a unit lead. And, yeah, no, he's going to start crumbling on multiple fronts right now. Because a lot of properties are hanging. And that the fact that I have a 20% firepower advantage over him right now, it is really starting to, to be noticed. It's really starting to be noticed. Look at this. He has to de devote both of his medium tanks to attacking my infantry. He gets an anti-air, and that's good. But um, he, he, really needs to, uh, he, he really needs to do something here. I was worried about getting base locked here. Luckily, he's not Kindle. If he was Kindle, that would have killed. That would have killed. And I would have been in, in dire straits. That medium tank would not have been easy to get off. I would need like a mega tank or something to fight that back. And that's not something that I can afford right now. But looky here. This entire section of the map is hanging right now. And I have a 20% firepower increase. So I can wall break a lot harder than Starflash might expect. So day 29 rolls in six days left, ladies and gentlemen. I am 14,000 behind and somehow still in the game. But I have a 20% income advantage. Now I'm starting to take back properties. Two properties taken back. And a lot of properties are hanging now from Starflash. And I'm pushing an attack here. He doesn't have any tanks. He has one tank, but it's out of position. 
And a Neo Tank is joining in on the attack now. I see a lot of opportunities to take properties from him right now. And I'm going to go for that. I, I shouldn't have captured here. I should have just run away. But what what is the weakness with medium tanks? They're slow. They're very slow. And they can't move through forests very well. Unless Flash pops her power. So I know I can outrun them. This city, this base is probably going to fall. I'm okay with that. Because I see a lot of other positions that are open to me right now. And at this point, I'm starting to realize that, man, I actually might have a path towards victory. Far behind as I am. Of course, um, Star Flash is applying heavy pressure to my bases. And now he risks taking my airport as well and the comm tower. So we're starting to go into a base race scenario right now. But because I'm Kindle, this medium tank is going to be so hard to dislodge. If I was playing against Kindle, he could have popped Urban Blight and killed it. But he's Lash. He can't do that. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, he's boxing up in the corner now. He realizes he just needs to defend. Gets a little desperate with his Battlecopter. I guess he just wants to try and deal as much damage as possible. Interrupts a bunch of captures. He needs to build infantry on day 29, ladies and gentlemen. He's actually very low on infantry right now. One, two, three, four, five infantry on the field. Oh, there's a bunch of infantry over here, but they're not doing anything. Urban Blight comes in. This is a good one. Boom. This medium tank right now. So much firepower. Look, so many of his properties are hanging right now. And I'm able to break through here as well because of my 20% firepower increase. Capturing a bunch of properties. Now, medium tank on the base. There's no way Lash is going to be able to dislodge that. He needs the Neo tank to kill it. He doesn't have one. I come in, gets a bunch of really good city attacks. I'm able to wall break here thanks to my 20% firepower advantage. And I'm able to kill the infantry and the artillery. And suddenly... All of Star Flash's fronts are collapsing. I'm even dislodging the tank. Look, I'm surrounding his two bases. This is insane. I'm going to get so many properties right now. And what can Star Flash do? The Urban Blight is just conking him out of existence. If he was Kindle, he could have attacked here so easily. But what is Lash going to do? Pop terrain tactics? Hey, okay, he's capturing my, my airport. That's decent. He still has a decent income lead. 8k. Built some medium tank? I would maybe not do that. I would maybe consider a Neo. But this front is going to collapse. He needs forces over here. ASAP. He's fighting back valiantly with the little troops that he have, but he's so outnumbered. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good you are. If you're numbered like 5 to 1, your strategy is not going to matter. You can just get overpowered. Like even an 800 rated player would win that engagement. So, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sucks his medium tank. That's funny. He will get prime tactics next turn, but is it going to be enough? Day 31 rolls in. I am 8k behind, but I'm winning on so many fronts. All of these properties are hanging. All of these properties are hanging. But will I be able to do it? I have four days left. Medium tanks are rolling in now, interrupting the airport. Captures my own airport back. 23 to 29 right now. 24 to 28. Antire comes in to clean up the Battlecopter. This tank now is effectively locking this base out. I can continue to lock that out as much as I want. Cleaning up gets a nice city boosted tank shot. Blocks his airport in case he wants to build something. Probably didn't need to, though. I have two Antire. It's not like he would build anything there anyway. And now I've cleaned up every single unit in this corner right now. Now this property is hanging. So many properties hanging everywhere now. And I'm even cleaning up a bunch of his weakened units because I'm Kindle. And I can do that. And we're on day 31 right now. Four days left to go. And suddenly, I'm only four properties behind. This is not looking good for Star Flash. That 20% firepower bonus is kicking in really hard. Prime Tactics comes in. Is it going to be enough? Will he be able to equalize? He interrupts one capture. Gets a good shot with the medium tank. Interrupts a second capture. Gets a good shot with his tank. But it's hard to fight against Kindle medium tanks. Especially when they have 20% increased firepower. Retreats back. It's not a very decent prime tactics, in my opinion. Okay, interrupts the airport. Probably wasn't getting captured anyway. This is fine. This is, uh... Looking pretty scary. Oh boy. Another property gets captured. Tw 25 to 27 all of a sudden. I just need two more properties to be ahead of Star Flash right now. And there we go, I capture another one. We're tied, ladies and gentlemen. Day 32, we're tied. We are tied. And it looks like Star Flash is gonna crumble now. I build another Battlecopter. Finally, I actually have some money to work with again. 
And what is he gonna do here? What is he going to do? He can't stop this. 34 units to 15. It's crumbling everywhere. Doesn't matter that he has a medium tank. I can block it. If he wants to shoot, he base blocks himself. He can. He shot. He shoots. But what does it matter? I can move my Battlecopter in next turn to block him further. Now he's capturing this city, but I have two tanks in the area. No way I'm going to let him get that. But he really... He knows he's playing for time right now. He's playing for time. We're tied. He just needs to capture one city and prevent me from taking the others. Mega tank comes out of the base. But you know what the problem with mega tanks are. Still takes three HP from Urban Blight, ladies and gentlemen. Still takes 3 HP from Urban Blight. Mega tanks are scary to build against Kindle. And now I am harassing his infantry down in the top, the bottom left. And here comes with the eighth Urban Blight. Boom. That mega tank looking a little juicy right now. Won't be so good. That's a lot of repair money he has to pay as well. Now his airport is hanging. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we are tied. So the moment I capture a single one of his properties, I am actually in the lead. And this is, this is looking really bad. Yeah, and my Battlecopters are coming in, preparing to block his tank. I block off his base with his Mega Tank. So, <laughs> he needs to use his Mega Tank to dislodge his own base right now. I build a bomber. Why not? Mega Tank in the vicinity. Bomber sounds like a good idea. I even build a Transport Copter. Because I realize that I can use a Transport Copter to boost an infantry towards the city and try to get it before day 35. So I'm like, sure. Let's build that transport copter. Why not? Derry 33 rolls in. Starflash passes his turn. He knows he's lost. <laughs> and I take a sweet little victory lap, ladies and gentlemen. Starflash passes his turn. He knows he's lost. I build a pipe runner. <laughs> I build a pipe runner. And ladies and gentlemen, my first victory against Starflash. I was so happy about this. This was the most enjoyable match of Advanced Wars I have ever played. From being behind 14k to somehow getting back into it towards the end. I will say if this was a... I think if this was like a 30-day turn limit, might not have gone so well. But because it was 35, because that's what the tournament decided, I was able to to get my, my, my get, get back into this. Now... I think the reason for why I was able to come back into the game was, was due to three reasons. One, I was able to get the comm tower back, and then I was able to get a second one, which really put me ahead. And I think Starflash was... he overextended a lot in this, in this game. Uh, he kept ramming his units into my strong positions. Like, he won initially, but instead of pulling back and, like, taking the win, he kept pushing forward and overextended. And the third reason is I just think Kindle hard counter slash on this map. I think Urban Blight is just too damn strong in a mixed space map. Uh, it's just so good. Lash's powers are nice. It allows her to move around a little bit. Uh, but it's just can't compare to the value of constantly dealing damage to your opponent's economy. Interrupting captures and that nice firepower bonus as well. I mean, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do against it? I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this game. It was a wild one. A long one. Probably one of the longest games I've ever played. Uh, that's not true, actually. I played like a 50-day Global League match one day, uh, once, but it wasn't it wasn't very entertaining. This was actually entertaining from start to finish. I, real, I, I know, I know, I like I'm tooting my own horn here, but I thought I played pretty well, and it was it's not it's not every day I get to take a game off Star Flash, and especially not in a live format. So, uh, forgive me, Star Flash, for casting this game. You knew I would the moment I won. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you're gonna see this map again very soon because I am playing a tournament at the moment and I'm gonna cost a bunch of other people playing on this map as well, so enjoy more of this because this is a great map. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy this uh, replay commentary, like, comment, subscribe, you know the, you know the drill, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye-bye!